everybody now that you at least are aware that matrices do bunches of stuff it's time to start using them for the fun stuff and the fun stuff is not here just for the fun it's so you can kind of realize how uh, I'm not gonna say simple but how straightforward this matrix stuff can be once you get it organized in your calculator and a couple of other engines. So what I'm going to do here, once again, I'm going to be in the review here. And we're just going to look at, looking at a calculator here, what a general program looks like to do, basically to draw and animate, draw and animate your name. And how you could actually collaborate to do it. Well, I had an example here of uh, a young person named A and R were her initials. And so if we look at that in terms of a font and we want to kind of do something with her name, we might want to either move her initials across the page or up the page or rotate them about the z-axis or rotate them about the x-axis or about the y-axis pitch roll or yaw them we need to know basically how to draw these this in lines and arcs and so every letter you can realize usually turns out to be about five to six points and each line then goes from one point to the other so for instance the A had point one, point two point three, point four, point five, and there was a couple lines coming from there, and the A, the R had one, point one, point, I'm sorry, one, two, three, probably something about four, five, six, and seven, so there's a certain number of letters, certain number of points in a letter, and we can then stack letters up together and space them by just adding a certain value to each one. So if inst for instance, if the A was originally defined as point 1 being 0, 0, 0, point 2 being 1, 1, 0, point 3 being 2, 2, 0, point 4 being 3, 1, 0, and point five being four zero zero. If we were going to shift it over to be a second letter, we would just shift each of these by five. So you can understand that letters are easily divided into points and arcs. And so then what does an animation program look like? Well, here's what you end up with. One, you need to have a array right that is stacked up x y z with a dummy one all the way across for each of the points that you want so we're going to say that all the way that's the x to the n y to the n y to the nth y the z nth z and one these are all stacked you have these describing all your points and then you need a transformation array. Which I hope you now realize begins with a identity matrix 1000010100 one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, zero, and then zero, 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 0001. And you're going to multiply this by that to get the movement. Now that just the data but what it doesn't do is it doesn't show you how to actually do the draw command in the calculator so that's what I'm going to do here so what you need to do is you get your data see if I can go here and get your data I don't even want to erase you can get your data over in the calculator here and what you do is you draw this work these lines from point to point then you multiply it by the transformation matrix and then you draw it again so what does it look like to draw points in an array. I'm going to introduce you to some of the draw, the single draw command in the calculator, and we'll just do it right in, inside a program so you can see that's probably the best place to do it. And we're going to draw theoretically the letters uh, in matrix B. So we can go to second 
quit. We can go to program here and we can make a new program. And we're going to add lines later, but we're going to create a new program. And we're just going to call it draw. D A R. So we're going to draw for that young person. And we're going to want to do all this kind of stuff beforehand, but in the end, we want to actually go ahead and get the length of our array. Now, the length of an array is actually the number of columns in terms of how many columns we have. And so you'd need to go through a middle basis here of actually getting the length of, a, of an array. So uh, the, the, the command within the program that gives you the dimensions of an array is dim. So you would do something like this. And it's actually not in the place you would think. Second list, operations, the dimension of second matrix B. We see it's 11. You could just have plugged it in. You want to go ahead and store that into some sort of list because those are two values. There's a f rows and columns. And now what you want to do, you want to get the second row, the second value in L1 and put it into some other variable. So you can go something like this. Second L1, open parentheses 2, and you can stow that into any variable you want. You could call it into A if you wanted, alpha A. And now A is the length of the number of columns in dimension B. But you actually might want to have one less than that because if you have 11 points, you probably have 10 lines. So you only want to draw 10 lines. So you might do something like this. Alpha A minus 1, stow into alpha A. And now you're prepared to do something what's called a recursion. You will are allowed, you're, you're prepared to go around kind of in a, in a loop in this program. And so we'll show you what that one looks like. And this is something you just want to kind of experiment with in some simple programs. But we're going to start here, probably more than, a little bit higher than we should. But program, and it is the 4 in this program, 4. You usually use something like a counter, like I. So we're going to go alpha I. And this one is comma 1, because you don't be given 0, and comma A. So you're going to go from 1 to A times. And then anything you now enter below here before you hit end is going to be kind of looped back through here. So we can say we're going to do a, here's the draw commands. We're going to do a second draw. And we're going to go to the line. And the line is x, y, x, y. So this is where it gets sometimes tough. You really got to visualize that you want to get the first row, first column, second row, first column. But you're going to change that each time. So you're going to go with this way. You're going to go. So line from, you're going to now find that data in the matrix. So you're going to go to second matrix you're going to go to matrix b and you want the first row first column but then you're going to want the and then the second row first column and then the second column first row and this is going to change over time so you want to have in this case you want to let it know that you're doing the rows first so that's going to be one comma and this is where it starts to get interesting alpha i so you want to get the ith column for your x and then comma second matrix and the, the kicker is you have to always do these grab the matrixes from this list and you'll see it. that is the reason why it's worth getting an emulator. It can be a little bit easier to do this. So now you're going to do 2 comma alpha i. Okay, so this is the x and the y of the first one. And then you're going to do comma second matrix b. 
of one comma alpha i plus one and then comma second matrix b of two comma alpha i plus one now what you'll find here you have to close your parentheses twice and then you go down and hit end second I'm sorry right in the program here you go to end now the chances of this working the first time are usually minuscule but what you'll see is you've actually gone ahead and told it to take some data from if we go up here I think we just don't see it we'll see what take some data from up there you got the dimension of B you're gonna take one less than that that's why your I plus ones will work and then you'll end now very often prior to this you're gonna to wanna to set up your window correctly and a few other things but we're gonna go ahead and just give this a try by hitting second quit now and then just going to program dar and see what it does for us and it looks like it did something it graphed something so we have this ability to loop within the next steps would be to do this I'm gonna go back here to the program to edit the next steps would be to start to go second insert and add more listing and looping so you might want to be multiplying for instance um, second matrix A the transformation rot matrix times the second matrix B and storing that back into second matrix B and you might want to be looping that 24 times so you might want to go back here and hit second insert and you might want to go through and just kind of do this on a 24 basis if you're doing it every 15 degrees so I'll show you what that looks like so you can nest but you need to use different variables once again second program so we're gonna go program here for you use a different variable now usually J is I and J are very common second J comma 1 comma 24 And that goes all the way around here. You might want to hit the enter here, go down second insert, hit a return, and you might want to clear the screen. So that's in the draw command. Second draw, clear the draw, go through, and then what you're doing is you're nesting underneath the end. So you're going to hear second, second, you want to just program and end here. So we'll see whether this works. I doubt that it will, like I say, the first time second quit program dar we'll see how that works execute and you see it's rotating it right around there so not too bad um, that's the real simple program and I'll once again show you here on the screen so you have it it's the input of this that is the most difficult and keeping track of where all your variables are you really want to keep notes on these things and because so you can start transferring them over to spreadsheets or um, to simple programming languages though this calculator one is worthwhile because it will get you to the very basics of 4d which is where a lot of the construction industry is going so right here I'm going to show you what, look what the program looks like we can go ahead we can edit it what did we do well we drew two loops one was going from 1 to 24 that was the one that was rotating our matrix but inside that given matrix what we did is we drew a line from each of the individual points that's going to be useful when you start doing traverses as well so we had a double nested loop we used one counter for the number of points minus one in our linear uh, traverse if you would and then above that we just rotated at 15 degrees a kick thanks for listening